Beaters, it's Gina from OrchidandOpal.com and I'm back today to share a little project with you, something I never thought I would be here creating, but here we are. So we are going to be making some wire wrapped beaded chain link mask holders or lanyards. I have the one that I created here based on some of the beads found in the bargain bead box for the month of August, but you can also find all the products you need to make these mask holders from bbcraft.com. I will leave the links to everything I'm using down below. They of course have tons and tons of beads, but also a large selection of wire. I'm going to be using using the 24 gauge and the tools that you'll need. You'll need wire cutters, some round nose pliers, some chain nose pliers, two lobster clasps, and then whatever beads that you want to use, of course. I also have a coupon code for BB Craft. It is OPAL5, O-P-A-L-5, and that will save you $5 off your purchase of $40 or more. And as I like to remind you guys, they do have free international shipping, but please do allow about two to four weeks for delivery, especially right now when shipping is just a little more touch and go. So today I'm gonna to be making a lanyard for my mom. I've been wanting to use these coral beads that you've seen me share before. And I'm also gonna break them up with some five millimeter fire polish beads. And we're just gonna alternate our links. So get creative with your colors, with your beads. This is such a versatile and simple concept. So I'm gonna show you how I make these simple wire wrap links. And this is a great way to practice with this technique. If you're trying to get better with your wire wrap links, you're gonna be doing this over and over again so you get lots of practice. What I like to do is cut, say, a 10 inch length of my wire. So I'm not cutting one piece for each link. I'm actually cutting a longer length that we're going to work with to create multiple links. And you'll see that that will save some waste while you're working with the wire. So what I like to do is grip my wire in the center and I'm keeping everything around the center of my pliers to keep the shape consistent. That's about the size that I want my loop to be. So that's something you can think about when you're creating is how large do you want your loops? And just try to keep them in the same position so that they will be consistent. And then I'm just bending this wire at the top, just folding that over the top of my pliers as I'm holding the pliers to the side and creating a 90 degree angle in the wire, just like that. Then I'm gonna take my pliers and shift them up, still keeping with that center location. And I'm gonna take this wire that we just bent and I'm going to bend it around the top of the pliers to get that rounded loop shape started. So we have that started and then I'm gonna shift my pliers so that the rounded portion is on the bottom now and I'm going to continue that rounded shape. So we have a loop forming right there. And this link is gonna be a little bit different than our other links because we are starting fresh. We're not worried about adding anything onto this at this point or connecting this to anything else. So we're just starting out with a single closed loop on this end. And then while I'm still gripping it, I just take my free hand and I gently wrap this wire around the straight wire about three times. And this 24 gauge is pretty pliable, so I don't have to use another pair of pliers to do that. And you can see I have about three wraps around that piece of wire. And that's something you'll wanna probably keep consistent as well as you go you'll wanna keep the number of wraps you do the same for each length to make it look clean and neat. So now that we have our first loop created, you can take your wire cutters and just trim off that end of wire. And you can see we have a still a pretty long piece of wire that we're able to work with going forward, not some little scrap that we have to throw away yet. So we get to set this aside. And in the meantime, we have a loop of wire with this end ready to go and ready to add some beads to. So I'm gonna start by adding three pieces of coral to this piece of wire. And I'm doing three just because I wanna make more of an impact with these little tiny slivers and really get a lot of that texture and movement. And that's just my preference for this. So we're going to then close up the other end of this piece of wire to match the first end of our link. And to do that, I'm gonna take my round nose pliers again, and I'm going to slide them down all the way down to where my beads 
have ended on this wire. I'm not going all the way back here because I don't need that much space for my loops that I'm gonna make. So I'm just gonna pinch it closer to the end. And like we did before, I wanna make a 90 degree angle in the wire. So I'm doing that right over top of the beads. And then just like we did before, I'm shifting my pliers. This time I'm going toward the center of the plier so I can create a loop that is consistent with the size of this one. And just like we did before, I'm gonna take this wire and loop it over the top to get that loop started. Then I'm gonna take my pliers and put the loop on the bottom, making sure that I have that kind of centered on the pliers. And then I'm going to continue the loop by wrapping underneath the pliers and in between that and where my beads end. And this is where the three little loops are going to be placed that matches the side. So gently, we're going to make one, two, and three, and that matches our other side. And also it's going to keep our beads in place and keep everything looking nice and neat. And then I just usually take my fingers and my pliers and I bend the loops so that the loops are facing the same direction. And then just take my wire cutters, trim that off and use my chain nose and pinch that end of the wire into the loops to hide that and also keep that from being jagged. So just make sure your wire is keeping that shape where the loops are in the same spot. And you can see that is our first link created. Our loop size is pretty consistent and the number of wraps we have around our wire. We are also left with these two pieces of wire. We haven't had to cut off any scrap yet. And now let me show you how to add a link onto this directly without a jump ring so that these links are not gonna come undone. This time I will take my wire and I will start about an inch or so down, maybe a little bit less. And I'm going to make that 90 degree angle like we did before, pivot the pliers upward, keep my positioning consistent in the center, wrap that wire, the shorter piece around the top of the pliers to start a loop, but we're not gonna close the loop yet because we wanna add on the link we just created to this link. I am gonna take my fingers and just shape that loop to continue that, but I'm also going to leave this little opening here, as you can see, so that we can slip on that first wire link that we made. And we're just gonna slip that in, just like that. And at this point, I like to take the round nose pliers and I like to hold that loop in place so that I can then come in with my chain nose and complete the wraps on the side. So I'm gonna take this little nubby piece and I'm going to wrap this around the three times with my chain nose pliers since I have less to work with this time. We have two wraps. And then as I pinch this, in toward the wire, that's gonna make the third and you can scooch that down a little bit to tidy it up and you can see I didn't have to cut off anything still. And now I'm ready for the next bead choice in this beaded wire chain. I'm gonna pick up a fire polish this time and slide that down. You can see how nicely these links are connected. They're not gonna come apart like if you had a jump ring in between. And now I'm gonna take my pliers, again, going towards the tip of those. I don't need it to be quite that big of a gap at this point. I'm gonna make a 90 degree angle. I'm going to turn my pliers, this time going toward that center point because we're gonna start our loop. Take the wire and wrap it around the top to get the loop started. This time we are gonna close the loop completely. I'm gonna shift my wire onto the bottom of the pliers and gently wrap the wire around three times to match our other side and keep our bead in place. There we go, just like that. And now you can take your wire cutters and trim off that end. And we can probably get one more link out of that segment. And look, I haven't had to clip off any waste yet. Again, just make sure that your wire is tucked in so there's no jagged edges. Just turn like that 
and here is the start of our beaded chain. So you're just gonna repeat that over and over again, linking on as many links as you'd like to to make your beaded chain. This is great for bracelets, necklaces, all sorts of different things. You can make a really long necklace with no clasp that you can loop around your neck several times, but it's also great for the mask lanyard, especially with how sturdy the construction is. You don't have to worry about these links coming apart and you can make it as long as you need to with colors and styles to suit your needs or the needs of those you're making it for. Now I found for me personally, a length of about 22 to 23 inches for the mask lanyard is great, but just go with whatever you're comfortable with. This sits the mask kind of at my chest level and not too far up my chin or in my face. And then we just finish each side off with a lobster clasp that is directly looped in to our last piece of the chain. So let's do that together so you can see how you finish that off. And then all you do is you clip your lobster clasp onto the loop of the mask and you have a very secure beaded chain. So let's make one more wire link together, one that we're going to be connecting our lobster clasp to. So to get started again, coming about an inch or so down from my wire, and making the 90 degree angle, pivoting my pliers and swinging around the top of those to get the loop started, shifting the wire to the bottom of my pliers and continuing that loop shape, but not closing it yet because we're going to attach that directly to the link in our chain right below. And then we're going to take our pliers and pinch on top of the loop just to grip that while we shape the short end of our wire around three times, one, two, and three. And I have a little teeny piece to clip off and shape that up. And this time let me add three more pieces of coral There we go. And we're ready to start to close up this link, but remember, we're going to be adding the lobster clasp to this this time to create this end. So once again, just like if we were to create the link that we would be adding more beads to, we're going to start the loop, but not close it so that we can just string on our lobster clasp directly onto the link just like that, and we're gonna close our wire around it. So I'm taking my pliers and holding that, and then I have a long enough piece where I can take my fingers and I'm gonna do one, two, and three loops, trimming off my excess, and just squeezing that in so that it's not poking out. Make sure your loops are facing in the same direction for each link. And there you have it, guys. You are well on your way to making your own mask lanyard or beaded chain, whatever you want to do. This would be great for a glasses chain as well. So many different possibilities. The sky's the limit. And then everything is so secure. So you'll just beat on your chain as much as you'd like to. Again, 22 to 23 inches seem to be ideal for me. That's what this length is that you're looking at. And I highly suggest directly wrapping on your lobster clasp, just like I showed you. As a reminder, I'll leave the links to all the products that I use today right down below the video and that coupon code OPAL5 for bbcraft.com where you can find tons of wire, beads, clasps, everything you need to make some beaded wire wrapped links. I want to thank you guys so much for being with me today for this tutorial. I hope it was helpful for you. Feel free to leave me a comment down below because I always love to hear from you. And until next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, happy beating. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. For more content like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of my latest videos. You can check out the information section below this video for links to all my social media handles, recommended products, and my shop and blog at orchidandopal.com. Thanks for watching.